Well, it's the first Lift Up Toy View video ever produced for summer 2020, and I'm making this video on the 2nd of June 2020, and I was going to be doing it on the 1st of June, but no, 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 the 2nd of June is, of course, the last day of the summer heat wave of 2020. Well, sort of, because the heat wave actually kicked in in May, which is, of course, last month, and I actually didn't make, like, you know, Lift Up Toy Views on the last fortnight, of course. I better not go into that subject though, no, otherwise I'm going to cause chaos. But, where are the flip flap toys? And I'm sort of thinking, where are they? But, if I grab my webcam here, and I know where my flip flap toys are, in fact they are, in fact one of the new ones of course, and all of these are new others, oh my god, down on the ground there is a whole stack of flip flap toys there that I actually haven't reviewed apart from the mat which is on the right corner though, and mind you there's a whole bunch of flip flap toys in fact, that's like 15, maybe 16 flip-flap toys, and I think there's so many of these guys that I can easily recognise. In fact, that will be a very hard thing to jump cut in this footage though, but I'll try. Just to let you know guys, before I'm making this video, I've got a USB fan with me though. Now, it's been so hot, it's been so warm and dry that yes, I've got to tell you guys though, summer is coming. Yes, all that hot air has been delivered from the tropics of North Africa and you know possibly areas of the Mediterranean and mind you it has been extremely dry in fact as I'm saying the word dry year 2020 has got to be one of the driest spring years ever for this country and mind you for spring 2020 it's been an extremely long time in the UK it's been chronically crazily dry also, the other problem with this fan here is because it's not really a very reliable fan here, I think the one and only problem with this fan is that I know there's a pen on the floor here, but I think the very biggest problem is is that what makes the fan keeps them stopping from functioning that well is of course the wire of course needs to be bent down to the other side like that so that the fan can work. And I think what happens is is that if the wire just keeps going straight up, the fan doesn't work. But nevertheless, it's still working, and I think it should stay in that way, even when it's not working, in a very straight way. Well, I don't know about you, but I've just turned on the table lamp so that I can literally show you the toys in a very bright and contrasty sort of way. But the first type of toy here is maybe this box here. Oh my god, I wonder what's inside this box. Let me just go ahead and just jump cut for a while though, before I can bring you the box. Okay, our first product, of course, is called the Large American Raptors 12 Pack, and it's also the first flip flap origami dinosaurs item. And as you can see, there's basically dinosaurs inside there. I'm not sure if you can see that clearly, but it's basically a flip flap origami dinosaurs toy. And yes, it's got all the hallmarks of what flip flap often makes in these toys. In fact, flip flap is the sort of made up brand that I've made. In fact, I'd probably say it's not that legitimate compared to many other toy companies, be it Mattel, be it Tommy, be it Hasbro, or whatever. You know, look at the artwork on these beautiful looking dinosaurs. They actually look quite intriguing, and it comes with two different dinosaur species, which both of these are theropods. And I don't think I've done, like, dinosaur themed toys. That's a very cool looking one here. Very cool looking um, version. I'm pretty sure Dakota Raptor and Utah Raptor are like the bigger American cousins to Velociraptor. There's the back of the packaging there. You can see a bit of dino action there. If I show you the camera closely there, I don't think it's in you know the the best col you know the quality of course. I think it's not the best quality that you can now be having at, at all times because of the way it's been designed. as a very beautiful looking rendition of Utah Raptor, and this one is Dakota Raptor, I think. You know, Dakota Raptor must be one of the newest dinosaur species ever discovered in the US in North Dakota. Now uh, this is um, Dakota Raptor here. Looks very nice and looks like a Doberman or a Rottweiler by the looks of it. Looks like a Rottweiler or, as I said before, a Doberman Pinscher in terms of sort of black and tan, orangey sort of colour. Very nice, uh, interesting box artwork, but the very disappointing artwork um, part is that some of it is sloppy, yet the artwork can be quite sloppy but nevertheless most of it is good okay so there's a very interesting fact here about Utah Raptor very interesting fact, I'm not sure if you can read in this one here, it says oh wow this is very interesting here, well I first discovered in its name named um, what's it called? 
Let me just jump cut in this one here so that I can read properly there. While first discovered in its named home state, Utah, Utahraptor is about four kids tall, rivaling the same height as Tyrannosaurus Rex. Well, that's interesting, isn't it, though? Very, very interesting sort of fact here, I would say. And you're probably thinking, where's the top artwork? Well, there it is there. There's a very interesting um, picture of Utahraptor there. It's basically uh, the right time to do the unpacking. Uh, let me go and get the scissors. Okay, I'm going to do the unboxing now, and I'm pretty sure I wonder what's inside these dinosaurs is going to be good or bad. Noticing the dinosaurs inside are not really uh, uh, packed properly inside here. I'm just going to go ahead and grab a scissors by the looks of it there. Oh, um, oh my goodness me, that's a very lethal sort of picture of just me just cutting up a a box. Oh my god, I don't know how you would actually... Um, oh my goodness me, this is actually quite interestingly... Um, uh, special. In fact, this is actually the first time I've actually done like an unboxing of these dinosaurs, and I think this unboxing shot has actually got to be very tricky. There's some crappy pieces of cardboard. Um, well, let's see what the dinosaurs are like, though. Oh my goodness me, out they come! Oh yeah, that's what we all got in our own hands, eh? What do you think? There's some dinosaurs here. It's actually quite a lot of variations here. Let me have a closer look at all. Okay, the dinosaur I'm literally holding now is a Utah Raptor, and it looks pretty cool. It's got a beautiful looking brown colorization as well as yellow, and um, in fact it looks quite nice. It's got the sort of same head pattern as that of a black headed girl, noticing the little dark brown you know, round patch at the back there. Very interesting, isn't it though? And it looks quite nice, it's got a brown eye. And let me show you the other Utah Raptor though. All of them have names, which is very important to know. And if I show you underneath of this female pink Utah Raptor though, she looks very nice. And she's also got a name there. I'm pretty sure there is there. There's the name Utah Raptor. And uh, very importantly enough, the way to tell the difference between a Utah Raptor versus a Dakota Raptor is via the legs. And you know, Utah Raptor's got those legs. Whereas Dakota Raptor here has got much shorter downsized legs and they're more simplistic god damn eh? very very weird and mind you I could literally just film this video for at least around two days oh, I don't know but there's actually quite a lot of different variations here here's another Dakota Raptor here a very nice easy jet yeah that's what oh my goodness man this is what I'm actually going to be calling it an easy jet sort of colorization here you know the orange and the white and stuff very interestingly um uh, nicely detailed, very interestingly detailed. Yeah, I'm trying to say the word intrinsically. That's what I'm saying, eh? Um, I don't know what the meaning is, though. <laughs> so give me, eh? Um, let me just show you the face or the head of it. I don't know how good or bad if I can get close to its eye. Yes, it's sometimes when when the camera tends to focus on really bright things, it doesn't really like it. At times I have to move it at different areas. There it is. There it is there. Dakota Raptor's other eye. Here's another Utah Raptor here. This is a pink version here. And this looks very similar to the other one, but look at that. It's much more like the summer black headed girl plumage. And what else do we have? There's a blue patterned version of Utah Raptor here. It's interesting, darker colours tend to be more well let's just say a bit more vibrant and a bit more contrast in uh, this webcam and I don't know how good about it is I think it's the table lamp okay so maybe the table lamp doesn't really need to be that useful at all um, this one here, oh this one here uh, it's quite a very interesting colorization of the Raptor, and it's because it reminds me of a, um, a great black back girl you know a seagull and it's got these um, pink legs and it's got a black back and it's got a very interesting looking yellow front on it, which looks like the beak of a seagull. And it's also got eyes of it as well, very similar to it as well. Very interesting. No matter you actually thought that dinosaurs were, you know, related to birds. Ultimate ancestors, aren't they? Well, prehistoric. Here's a very beautiful blue Utah Raptor in two different shades of blue. And you said 50 shades. <laughs> Why am I thinking of 50 shades of grey? That's got to have... Oh my god, that is literally like the worst film series ever. 
But mind you, um, look at the very beautiful colours, eh? You know, dark blue and... I can't, is that navy blue? I can't remember. And it's got white at the front. Very interesting, eh? It's a bit of a Scottish sort of colour, isn't it, eh? But hey, that's um, Utah Raptor. And there's another... Uh, another looking, um, another orange and brown looking um, Utah. No, it's a Dakota Raptor. Sorry, and you've gotten into the fail part of the video there, but looks very, very nice. It's got a brown front part here. Looks like a moustache, isn't it? Hey, very nice brown on the side. There you go, orange on the top, and also the legs and uh, black feet. And uh, there's a female uh, Dakota Raptor here in white and pink. Looks very interesting there. Yeah. Looks very cool. Pretty good and cool indeed. I love it. I love it. Very nice design. And I'm pretty sure these dinosaurs would probably stand very well though. Now, I've actually tested them just before I made this video and I think all of them standed pretty well. So they all look very, very nice. There's another... Um, is that Utah Raptor or is it Dakota Raptor? Let's take a look. Oh, it's Utah Raptor! I thought it was Dakota Raptor but I'm pretty sure it's the, the way that this design has been created it almost looks like um, sort of a very interestingly related version of uh, Dakota Raptor it almost looks like a hybridized version of Utah Raptor and Dakota Raptor so they've literally made like a Dakota Raptor but in much more of a miniature size or a much more of a downsized sort of creature in a sense or maybe it could be a juvenile I don't know and here is a beautiful looking black and tan um, orangey sort of darkish brown um, how would you say it? Dakota Raptor got some menacing looking red evil eyes and I'm going to show you closely eh? Oh, yeah. looks quite nice doesn't it though? very evil looking isn't it? well very evil in a sense eh? and um, yes it looks quite nice and as I said before but evil in the same way and you know when you put black and orange together it looks quite bright in colours though but Yes, it looks quite nice. Bet you... Oh my goodness me. Bet you what? And you know one thing about these dinosaurs is they'll never get extinct until I place them straight in the box. Well, I've got the dinosaurs repacked again and I might show you the back of the packaging or the box again uh, because I've actually realised that this piece of artwork actually has something that really caught my eye. It almost looks like the whole freaking United States of America. And I might show you what it looks like there. You've got California and Washington at the west there. All the way to the east where you can see, like, you know, Michigan and um, Illinois. And I'm pretty sure that's what it looks like there. Of course, there's Kentucky at the east. And then you go, oh, look at that. There's Florida here. Yeah? And if I turn to the other side, oh, hang on. Let me just go ahead and show you what it looks like, eh? On this part of the box, I can see Texas and Louisiana. Let me just show you. There's Texas right there. Yeah. Oh my goodness me. That is in fact Texas on the flip-flop logo. There's Louisiana. And uh, if I show you what it looks like there, there's other parts of the USA. I'm not quite sure. I can't remember of. Oh, on the front of the packaging there you can see Maine. And then you can see like Virginia and also New York Island. And also like on this part of the box here, you might also be very lucky enough to see that there's also South Carolina there's also Georgia and Florida and I might show you at this packaging here I might show you closely there okay so that might be like South Carolina or Tennessee I'm not quite sure and on in this second here on the box here is Florida that, that is absolutely freaking weird this is like a very weird oh my god this is like a poor anagram well actually not guys this is like a very weird mumbled up it's like a very modded up version of the map of the United States of America so this is really giving me a, a bit of trivia on the box artwork that's really amazing and I know it's got some very beautiful bright colors and stuff and I know it's got some info about the dinosaurs inside and talks about you know the chomping jaw action and stuff and also two totally different you know stated dinosaurs you know being Utah Raptor and Dakota Raptor being named after North and South Dakota and Utah in the US hey of course and um Yes, they all have obviously um, chompy jaw actions there. They've got very obvious chompy jaw actions here. But there you go. Uh, and this product here uh, costs about £23.50. Here's the price of it, of course. 
Actually, I almost forgot the price, so eh? <laughs> maybe I have. Uh, but anyways, that's actually quite a very nice product. I'm not going to repack this product again because I know this box originally came from a Tommy Playwell train set, which was not decorated like this. And it came with, like, you know, as I said before, the EH500 train. And remember, I did the video about that train two months ago, or one and a half months ago? That was actually quite an amazing video, though. Very interesting sort of autopsy video, or I don't know. It's quite a very nice looking video, I'd say. But, anyways, I'm going to put that product all the way. Oh, that's gonna hurt. That's a big thud. Well, okay, with the dinosaurs done, being Utah Raptor and Dakota Raptor, I wonder which part I'm actually going to be choosing now. Hmm, let me just have a go, eh? Let me just find another toy. Oh, let me just grab this one here. Oh, I wonder what this product is. It's called the Rich Sertramimus Fishing Ground 12 Pack. And once again, it's another dinosaurs themed product. Oh my goodness me, £15.99, £16. It's another dinosaur themed product, but this time I've got fish, we've got crocodile headed dinosaurs called Sertramimus. I think they're found in, in an African country called Niger. And I think they were extinct there, of course. And mind you, it looks quite interesting there. You can see some dinosaurs in different colours there, based on such a mimus. And mind you, it looks pretty awesome indeed. Pretty awesome indeed. And look at that, that dinosaur looks like it's about to eat a fish. Very nice, eh? Let me just go ahead and do a jump cut. Sooner or later, before I could do a file. Okay, I'm going to do the unpacking here. Uh, I don't know how many dinosaur themed products are going to be there in this video. And just to let you know guys, this product has actually been glued in together because the envelope overall has been, well, completely dry and I couldn't even get the envelope to work that well, so it's been dry. So I can't even unpack this one properly though, but I might give you a good glimpse of what's inside uh, this very interesting dinosaur product. In fact, this might be the first stuff origami dinosaur product I've made just before I made those freaking raptors. Okay, so let's take a look at this beautiful looking brown such a mimus. Very interesting colours though, it's got a very interesting you know it looks like a duck bill rather than a um a crocodile head. That's very weird. I never expected that. Look, look I'm pretty sure it looks more like Myosaur or Iguanodon. That's the under dinosaur I was thinking of. Or a Hadrosaurus. And that's another one here. That's very weird. I could literally make you know, dinosaurs from this place, like, you know, Parasolophus. That's a cool dinosaur name. Now, what's the other one here? This one here is a, another dinosaur here. This looks very interesting. All these are such a minuses. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure this... Oh, wow, this colorization here has got a very nice um, cheek there. Also, I'm, well, I'm actually quite curious, though. They've also got different eye colors and stuff. Yeah, very interesting, though. Let me show you the green one here. Very interesting colours that they added to these dinosaurs. I think the one I was holding here, I know it's got cheeks in it. It's also got a very interesting colourisation, which also reminds me of a great cormorant. Okay, so that's what it's remind me of. You know, I've already shown you the green one though. Very cool looking, eh? Uh, it, let me show you this one here. Okay, I'm pretty sure these are more related to the colours of crocodiles that you see on reality. Very nice looking face. Okay, so it's got a very nice looking yellow eye and and yellow on the side with a grey sort of colorization here. And I might show you this, um, oh, it's another uh, dinosaur here. Uh, another such a mimus here. Once again, like the um, Dakota Raptor that I showed you here, it's got the same seagull-like plumage, but I think it's more of a lesser black back or a yellow-legged gull by the looks of it. It's got some red lines in it as well. Pretty prehistoric, but also modern you know, at the same time, even though dinosaurs are extinct. And I might show you the fish that also came with the set here as well. Very, very nice. Very, very nice indeed. It's quite a very, you know, good set indeed. Very, very good. And uh, they look quite nice, and I might be able to repack them straight away. Oh yeah. Well, okay, that's this product done. So what you thought, so I'm basically thinking of a Flip up origami dinosaurs review. That would be amazing, eh? I told you about flip up dinosaurs. You know, origami ones. In fact, I've actually got some time to create some flip up origami dinosaurs in the future. In fact, I've actually made some in the in the past. I think around 2016 and 2017, maybe 2018. I can't remember. 
But let's just find some more products here. Oh, I wonder what I'm going for. It's Purple the Purple Heron on the background. Yay! Let's show you what we have. Okay, so I'm just going to put the camera like so. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at a closer, sort of very interesting, um, well, let's just say, interview with Purple the Purple Heron. Oh, yes, it looks very amazing indeed. He looks like what you obviously see in the Thailand 2020 piece of merchandise. And mind you, this is what he is. He is basically a purple heron. Yes, that's what he is, eh? But the question is, does he stand well? Well, no. He doesn't really stand that well. Unless, I'm pretty sure, if you try and stand him with his wings, that's the, you know, the only thing I would say. Whenever I think about this toy, it almost looks more like a plush toy rather than just, you know, an action figure. You know, it's, it's or maybe a, a very poorly designed vinyl figure. Very weird. It's like that regular show Mordecai um, pop figure that was featured in the video that I can't remember. Uh, that was poorly designed and it couldn't even stand that well. And then all during the video, uh, that person used blue tack when he was trying to stand that model though. But anyways. Both of the purple heroine, of course, I know he's like the main character of Thailand 2020. He's got these beautiful wing designs which look semi-realistic, of course. He's got a nice looking yellow long beak, slender long beak of yellowness, if that's a word. <laughs> Very interesting eyes, and the supercilian looks beautiful as well. And he's got a very nice looking brown head back patch as well, as I'd call it. And look at that very cool looking neck. And mind you, his neck would be, you know, he would literally have his neck be retracted when he's in flight. But look at this. Beautiful snake-like impression of a bird. And mind you, it looks so, so beautiful. In fact, I've actually made this around late April. No, I've actually did this around late May of 2020. I think it was around two weeks ago. I can't remember. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. It's a very nice looking bird, of course, two weeks ago on the 23rd of May. I hope I'm right, though. Or else people are going to be uh, crucifying me if I'm wrong here. But that's what we have. But put the Purple Heron from Darlin 2020. Okay, that's an order for that product down. In fact, I've, I'm actually quite curious. Um, I've only got like 12 fifth lap products left, and I'm going to go for something which is uh, a lot more related to fifth lap origami, like those dinosaurs are showed you recently. I'm just going to go with this product here. Oh look at this! It's Ugandan Knuckles! Do you know that way? That way! That way! That way! That way! That way! Oh no! It's Ugandan Knuckles! Oh my goodness me! You remember the good old days of VR Chat back in 2018? You know, when it was so hot and popular and there was Ugandan Knuckles everywhere like they were saying I spit in the mudas! Do you know that way? The way! Okay, I should stop being daft. Okay, let's just... Look at the back of the packaging here, and I gotta tell you guys, hey, it looks mighty strange. There's a um, an emu, and there's an echidna. And look at this. Do you know the way or that way, my queen? Do you know that way? And that's what it says there on the top right corner of the packaging. Oh yeah. Oh, let's just take a look at it. Oh, yeah. Also, it's very worthy to note that these products obviously have the little red dot because they're made during the coronavirus pandemic. But anyways, let's just go ahead and unpack this very viral toy of the past from, you know, January 2018 and, you know, December 2017. I think that's when the meme started to become freaking popular. Oh, look at this! It's the Master Emerald! 
Oh my god, I've actually copied this from Jeremy Schaefer Origami. That's the YouTuber who actually made this emerald. And mind you, this is what the emerald looks like. This is like one of those Chaos Emeralds from freaking Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh my god. This is actually what I was thinking of. Oh my god, I think I did this so well. My goodness me, this is so brilliant. And let's take a look at uh, some of the um, Ugandan knuckle characters. Oh my goodness me, I'm actually going to play with them. I spit on you, Angibo Ebola! Not today, you gun and knuckles. You're not doing it now, because what we all have now is COVID-19, and if you do it, you're gonna get fined. No way! This is my way! And I'll find your way to hell! And do you know the way of the devil? No, I don't. I'm not even gonna talk to you. Well, actually, I'm just gonna showcase these guys. This blue kitten here um, looks like Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, but I'm pretty sure this is what Uganda Knuckles comes in. There's like two different colour versions of Uganda Knuckles. So there's like a Sonic version, okay, with those very cool looking beady eyes there in the artwork. Okay, so let's take a look at Uganda Knuckles. This is the one that many people are familiar with because it looks like Knuckles in what it looks like. I know he doesn't chuckle, you know, but he's Knuckles. Uh. Oh, pardon me! Did you just burp on me? You're gonna give me a ball out of your burp! Well, no, that's not the truth, hey, you gonna knuckles. Hey, hey, stop playing rough. There you go. There you go. Calm down and just rest well. And stop complaining about my review, eh? Okay, here's another you gonna knuckles here. How are you doing today, my brother? I'm not your brother! <sighs> Jeez, those echidnas drive me crazy. But, anyways, that's what we all have here. The Master Emerald Guardian the Kittness Fight Pack Set! Oh yeah! And mind you, I'm actually talking very, you know, very enthusiastically because I'm actually really, really happy to hear about you Uganda Knuckles. Oh yeah! Let me just repack the packaging along the way. Well, actually, repack all of the toys in the packaging. That's all I was trying to say. Oh wait, let's not forget, in this product here, you also get an emu. Sorry about that one, eh? Oh, I'm so sorry about this one, eh, Mrs. Emu? Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to, um, abandon you, eh? Oh, I didn't mean to that one, eh? But she's so beautiful, she's got a brown body, she's also got, you know, grey feet, a grey neck and head, she's also got a brown eye, and she looks so beautiful, and mind you, she's not gonna harm the Master Emerald, Time by time. Oh yeah. Good on you, mate. Maybe I should call you Sheila, eh? Because, you know, in Australia, you obviously call someone a female Sheila. Right? Very correct. Okay, that's it. Quite interestingly enough, whenever I think about you gun and knuckles, I obviously, when I run away from that meme, I'm pretty sure that you'll be like, Why are you running? Why are you running? And I'm pretty sure I've actually got it off from a Ugandan movie called Who Killed Captain Alex? Which is like one of the most funniest, you know, movies that I've actually heard of. And you know, Ugandan films tend to be more like Quag, 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 <laughs> Oh my god, I'm actually having fun in this story with you. This never gets old. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I'm actually gonna have a whole bunch of subscribers. Please subscribe. <laughs> oh god. Why am I behaving in this so weirdly? Why am I behaving it so weirdly? That's what I was trying to say, eh? <laughs> well, apart from Knuckles the Echidna, let's go ahead and grab whoever the freaking heck is that animal there. I wonder what this is, but I'm pretty sure it's a three banded Brazilian armadillo. And mind you, I'm actually starting to create like a Brazilian theme of animals, and it looks pretty amazing. And, um, yeah, scissors just fell straight to this section of the bed here, I think. It was that direction now. You know, at this section here, I think. Right there. But I think I've just moved it away, I've just shoved it to the other side of the table there. And let's take a look at this armadillo here, which looks quite amazing. You know, armadillos are found in South America, and, you know, I'm pretty sure that's where all they come from, except for the nine-banded armadillo, which is like the only armadillo that, you know, apart from the fact it carries leprosy, it's also one of the only armadillo species in the USA. Uh, 
to be found in the USA, of course, but this is the Brazilian three-banded armadillo that I'm actually going to be talking about here. It's got a 3D head, and it's got blue irises on its eye, and, and look at that 3D head. This is freaking cool, eh? Mind you, this could be like one of the most viewed videos on my YouTube channel, eh? I don't know, but just look at it. It's so cute. Oh my god, it reminds me of freaking Sandshrew from Pokemon. Oh my god. And on the um, body here, looks like a roadkill armadillo when, when you actually think about it though, but the reason why it's like this is because it's got a very cool feature and I'll show it to you right now. Okay, so it's got a very nice looking 3D head, it's got a tail which is shaped as a triangle, and it's got like this sort of flying squirrel like body, I don't know why, and it doesn't stand that well, and um, yes, that's all I can say, it doesn't actually stand that well, it stands pretty flat. Well, although I could literally make it into a 3D model that perfectly stands well, of course. But the one and only feature I'm actually really surprised about this is that because it's a three-bane armadillo, you can actually do something like this. It's like a Transformers toy. And it's like the part, it's something in reality that I've actually discovered, like, you know, three-banded armadillos tend to roar in their balls. They tend to curl, you know, they tend to curl themselves up like a ball. So it's like a Transformers toy. It looks actually pretty cool. And I don't know how good or bad I could literally do, but it's actually quite a very interesting uh, mammal, of course. It's quite a very nice looking mammal. Very, very nice. Oh my goodness me. Am I actually getting to the part where it transforms into a ball? Well, sort of. Or maybe. Uh, there's no instructions for that toy. And uh, that's the other problem I have to say here. Uh, but it looks quite cool, actually. Uh, it's like a Transformers toy. You can. Oh my goodness me, I actually cannot even just basically um, look away from this. It's just so cute. Oh my goodness, it's actually so clever. It actually is like, you know, the three-banded armadillos in reality, they just turn into a boar and stuff. I don't know. But it's not really a boar, isn't it? It's just like, I'm just trying to replicate what a real armadillo would look like. But, you know, the real Brazilian three-banded armadillos, there's also a southern three-banded armadillo. And uh, it looks quite nice, but I don't know how good or bad it is though. But quite nice. And I've actually noticed that this model was originally broken. It's leg there. I'm pretty sure this section here was broken. It was ripped apart as I was dancing to some Brazilian carnival samba music. And mind you, when I shoved the chair a bit too rough, I accidentally um, just ripped this section here. I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure if I can show you on camera here, but I think I've accidentally ripped the animal was um, leg like so, so I have to add these um, pieces there, it's actually falling apart. But nevertheless, I'm actually really happy to have like an armadillo themed toy. So I might make more of these toys, maybe in the future or possibly not because it's got a freaking 3D head but it looks so cute, it's got these beautiful looking ears and that cute tail, so cute isn't it? Very nice indeed. Oh yeah, very very cool indeed. Well, apart from armadillos, I've got a hedgehog here, of course. Uh, being this product here, it's called the European Hedgehog Array um, Figure 5 Pack. Array being a group of hedgehogs. It costs about £8.50. And yes, it's got some Sonic the Hedgehog references here. Once again, it's got the little red dot to refer for the fact that this product was made during the Corona outbreak. Looks very cool. Okay, it's got a very interesting, realistic version of Son of the Hedgehog, a very animified version of Son of the Hedgehog in European Hedgehog colours. Look at this, gotta go fast, Sonic time! Oh wait, hang on, let me just take a look what we have. Gotta go fast, Super Sonic time! And look what it says there on the bottom here. Hedgehogs! That's very daft reading of hedgehogs of course. That's, um, and once again it's part of the British Wildlife Collection toy range here because, you know, hedgehogs are found in the UK, but they're vulnerable, and uh, I'm pretty sure they're endangered uh, in this country because their numbers are declining. Um, maybe it's all down to conservation efforts and stuff, which may have made the animal so um, pretty common. I've actually just saw a hedgehog, and I'm pretty sure I might have seen a hedgehog before in... Um, um, what was that place? I think it was somewhere around Rubri in the Rubri and Bromsgrove. I'm pretty sure it was like the Worcestershire border. I think it was around about October 2017, I think. 
Now, I've seen these creatures there, and oh my goodness me, this is like the Ugandan Knuckles figure. And what's really cool about these is our, what I should have showed you on the Ugandan Knuckles toys is that they've got those beautiful looking spines, and you can actually uh, articulate these so you can actually make into different poses and stuff. Like you can literally make him stand him up properly in a very um, proud way and in a very you know, lazy way. You know, it's like a mundane lazy way, you know, very lazy way, and then you have a very sort of, well, let's just say, active way, more than a very, uh, very exercised way. Look at that, it looks like he's doing push ups or something. Come on, Sonic, do some push ups before you are too slow! Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm thinking, eh? But anyways, as I've worked out, hedgehogs can travel like six miles per hour when running. Not bad. And they've got like, you know, little cute eyes and stuff. They've got like grey faces, of course, on the front. I've got black, you know, cheesy looking eyes. And, um, yeah, that's what they all look like. They've got these beautiful spines like we saw on the echidna. You know, your gun knuckles, of course. And I'm gonna repack these guys in that packaging and mind you it's so much cheaper than those you gun and knuckles toys I've just looked at but I might be making like a five pack of these um, which will be amazing like you know like the hedgehogs but I might make a five pack of the you gun and knuckles uh, toys which will be completely amazing and I might grab another toy here um, let, me, let me just grab actually quite a whole bunch of toys um, let me just grab some of these here okay I'll do Oh my goodness me, I'm actually going to do a jump cut before I should continue. Well, okay, let's take a look at this product here, being the Pied African Crow. In fact, it's called the Exotic Pied African Crow Small Murderous Flock 5-Pack. That's what it says on the packaging here. It looks quite nice, and I think I can see the word exotic by the looks of it. I'm not sure if you can see that via the yellow colorization on the letters here. It makes it very hard when you see things with yellow and yellow. £7.50, I'm actually thinking about the table lamp, it's also yellow and too bright and dim looking and uh, this packaging has seen better days, I think the um, the stickiness is not looking good indeed <coughs> that's what it says here on the back of the packaging here very cool looking rendition of a pied African crow looks quite nice isn't it and I think it's like um, uh, probably about the same size as a European carrion crow or hooded crow and I think if I remember in summer 2019 I've actually made a product about it before in a 10 reviews in 10 minutes video before I think it was number 3 that I did and I think it's very similar there you go there's the pied African crow or African pied crow well actually it's simply called pied crow by the looks of it there let me show you at the camera there there you go it says pied crow and mind you it's got different eye variations of course look at that very interesting. I think I've actually covered these toys before, as I said earlier, back in July 2019. Yep, looks very, very nice, doesn't it? Very, very cool looking. Okay, it looks very, very nice. In fact, this is like one year before, like, I did like a 12 pack of these, and this is so nice. Oh, yeah, eh? Oh, my goodness me. This is like a, a delay before I could come in and do these toy views, like, you know. Flipped up origami flapping birds, eh? That that is actually freaking cool. Um, not sure if I could flap the other one here. Oh yeah, very cool indeed. Oh yeah. And mind you, it's so freaking hot in here because it's summertime where I live. And um, sadly, this is the last day of the heat wave now until you know further notice from the weather here in the UK. This one here, the Common Swift Small Flock 5 Pack, costs about £7.50, comes with some swifts, which are swallow-like birds, which are related to hummingbirds more, and they're quite brown. And what's quite funny is, is that there's no anatomy at the back of the packaging here, so I might do that after I've made this video, which is going to be quite interesting here. So let me show you what's inside. Oh yes, there's some swifts here, very, very nice. Yep, there's, oh look, they've got pretty tiny beaks, and what's quite interesting about Swifts is, is that they can literally drink, eat, fight, and sleep on the wing, which is amazing. That is actually very, very clever for a bird like that. And there's some more of these here, there's different shades of brown here, okay, so I might, like, you know, one thing I could do is I could make like a five, oh wait, I could make like a twelve pack of these birds, sorry. 
Yes, very, very nice looking birds. Very, very nice indeed. Maybe I could literally try and make, you know, the whole Napney thing just in time. Um, that would be very, very nice. There will be, oh my goodness, there's some beautiful looking grey feet there. You know, I think they've actually uh, nailed the sort of colour. I think the colourisation of the beak here looks very, very nice. Uh, I don't know if swifts look like that. In reality, I think they're more of a darker sort of blackish brown sort of colour. Um, yes, they look more like sand martins than swifts, but maybe you might be totally wrong. It's all down to ornithologists, but what I might do is I might try and put the anatomy on the back. Maybe after this video, or maybe just now. Or later. Well, with the birds repacked again, which is one of the nicest things I could say here in this video today. And uh, guess what? Look at that, the anatomy is done, perfectly done, and straight away undusted which is amazing I don't know swifts are like much bigger birds than swallows and martins with much bigger wings and once again as I said earlier in this video they're more closely related to hummingbirds let's take a look at the other product I'm going to be doing now it's called the Good Mama Mallard Defensive Scene 12 pack and it costs about £15.95 and it's got like mallard ducks a peregrine falcon and some ducklings which to me they look more like Canadian geese goslings to me than mallard ducks but it might be totally wrong eh and that's what they look like looks quite nice there's another pogan falcon chasing another male mallard and I'm pretty sure it's based off the scene where it's the breeding season in the UK let's take a look at what we have or well, maybe around the United States I'm pretty sure I think they're found everywhere okay so here are the ducklings though they look quite interesting now. Very interesting looking um, ducks there, you can see there. And that's pretty amazing, isn't it? There, you get these little baby ducklings. So there's like six of these. Very interesting little baby ducks that you get there. Uh, it's very reminiscent during spring and summer. Very, very nice indeed. And we'll take a look at the mallard ducks though. I think this is very similar to the other mallards that I reviewed in previous videos before. I think it was like the um, semi-realistic, I think it's like the realistic mallard sort of, I'm pretty sure this is the same sort of design that I've actually covered in a previous video before. And I, I think it was like the video where I did like, you know, there were some trains and mind you it was like the video about the last flip-flop origami flapping bird toys before, you know, COVID-19 has halted us and I think it was like just before I did like the full flip-flop origami flapping bird toys uh, toy view which is quite amazing this is the female mallard as you can tell by the looks of it of course and a very very similar detailing that I actually did in the previous video yeah very very nice right and let's take a look at the pogan falcons because they look quite well let's just say brutal and yes even though they're one of the fastest animals on earth they're of course a bruiser of a bird look at that very very nice very interesting rendition of a pogan falcon here. Except with the eye. Very okay, cool looking eye patch, isn't it, eh? And we'll take a look at this other pogan falcon. Looks very cool, isn't it? Very, very, very niche looking, isn't it, eh? And it's quite a very nice looking sort of bird, eh? Yeah, I must have. I, I'm pretty sure I must have covered this species before, but maybe I have seen actual pogan falcons before, which is quite interesting. And speaking of falcons, I've actually made another product about them, which is going to be quite interesting. And also, speaking of water toys, I've also made another product about water birds, which is pretty amazing, and I'll show you right now. Okay, here's our product here. This one here, I think, is called the Eurasian Hobby Small Flock 5-Pack, and it costs about £7.99, yes, £7.99, or £8, as you can tell. It's a British Wildlife Collection toy, and yes, they've got the same info of Generation 114 releasing on the 15th of June 2020. Strangely enough, I've actually heard from um, a video which relates into coronavirus. I'm not quite sure that... I'm not quite sure, but I wonder what some person was saying to me that even though that there are some U10s going back to school on the 15th of June, I don't think that all of the people, all of the pupils from U10 would be heading to school with face-to-face -face time. I don't know they'll be on their uniforms and stuff, but anyways, let's talk about the hobby because you know hobbies are you know very well known summer visiting falcons. 
you know, they've got these sort of beautiful looking red trousers on them, or undersides of course at the back. Uh, it's more like a scarlet sort of orangey sort of colorization here. I think I've seen these boots before, they're actually pretty common, very common in England and Wales, I think they can be found in England and Wales. Not so much in Scotland, but I'm pretty sure these guys are relatively common on where I live, which is the West Midlands in England. Mind you, England's in... Has, um, I'm pretty sure it's eased in the lockdown, but I don't know how good or bad it is. It really is, in fact, a very bad um, situation. I'm pretty sure that's a very bad situation to live now, guys. But anyways, let's take a look at what this hobby is. I know this bird of prey loves to catch dragonflies in wetland areas. Yes, swampy areas, of course. Very, very cool looking... Eye patch reminds me of Horus, you know, and Pidgeot, you know, the Egyptian god Horus, and um, that's just about it. Though they're just hobbies, very very nice. They often attack, you know, swallows, martins, and even swifts. And yes, these birds of all can make hobby overall almost like a giant swift, and they almost look like crescents, sickles, anchors, or boomerangs when they're in flight. Very cool looking birds, very, very cool indeed, and also very majestic looking and beautiful, uh, even though they're quite small, yeah, I know they're very small species of bird of prey, and mind you, I'm pretty sure I'm actually going to assemble this video on Windows Movie Maker, as a bit of a clue here, anyways, the next buddy here is a Great Crested Grebe Courtship Fishing Pair 5 Pack, it's costing about £7.95, there's the price there, and it's a British Wildlife Collection toy, and I might do a jump cut here because I want to show you the back of the packaging quickly. Here's a look at the back of the packaging here. All I can see is a great crested grebe smiling, and look at this! There's Mario and Luigi! Yay! Remember back in the good old days where there was a couple of memes that related into Super Mario Brothers? And look at this! There's Luigi and Mario! Oh my god, I wonder who made these fishies must have made Nintendo so, so really ticked. Whoops, said that word so... Oh god, sorry, didn't mean to say that word. Sorry Nintendo. Uh, let's take a look at what we have. Anyways, I'm just going ahead and pack this. Even though the envelope's been dried off, which is not a very, very good aspect to talk about. Anyways, oh there they are, there's some fishies here that look like Mario and Luigi. You know, Luigi and Mario has been the meme version of these. To you guys being an internet meme. Why is this a freaking meme that is like, you know, from the good old days of 2010's you know, thing? Remember I did talk about YouTube poop? That was actually quite hilarious. There you go, there's Ouija the fish. There you go, it looks quite interesting, eh? That's a very unrealistic looking fish that is based on Ouija. I could have said the word exasperated or, well, let's just say livid, but sorry, too late now. Uh, there's Mario. Okay, so it looks quite nice. Very, very nice. And, um, yeah, that's what it looks like here. And let's take a look what we have. This is a Great Crested Grebe, which is a male one. Okay, so let me just show you what it looks like in flight. You know, it's funny about Great Crested Grebes. They don't tend to fly that much as with the other water birds, like, you know, waterfowl. You know, I think this is like, I'm pretty sure this is a little bit like a coot or a moorhen, but I'm pretty sure I've seen a video of these guys flying at sea in uh, Dungeness, in Kent, which is quite nice. And there's a female, Great Crested Grebe, very, very nice, very, very interesting indeed. Rarely you ever see these guys flying. And um, I'm pretty sure when spring comes, that's, that's the biggest moment when you see these guys uh, court shooting together with like a piece of fish which is very very nice and in fact they do clip so well very very nice indeed well you know what these guys are all having oh my goodness me this is actually quite pretty nice eh very very nice eh jeez why am i thinking of all these freaking memes you know first we have Uganda Knuckles then we have Malio and Ouija whenever in the freaking world is gonna be like oh my goodness me today's you know, flip out toy views are going to be all about memes and freaking YouTube poo. Oh, I'm just going to jump up here because we're going to move on to the Dunlop. 
Well, strangely enough, there you go. Here is... Oh, wow, I'm pretty sure what this product is called. It's called the Dunlin Small Summer Plumage Flock 5-Pack. So they are literally like Dunlins, which have their own summer plumage. Dunlin being a species of sandpiper or a small wader. And it's also one of the commonest coastal waders, the commonest coastal small species of wader. £7.50 is, of course, the price. And at the back of the packaging, look at that. Very agile looking boots. Small, but very elegant and agile looking as well. And to be quite honest, whenever I think about these birds, um, unlike the sandpiper, I don't think they're, they're... I'm not quite sure, but I don't think these birds work like clockwork. They don't have this sort of like... You know, when they tend to run, I'm not sure if they run like clockwork toys, as in sandaling, which is their relative species. Oops, sorry, the packaging's been ripped partially. Just a tiny bit of ripping. Not nice to hear about it, eh? But I think it's because these envelopes are now filled in with glue, which is now becoming the new norm because these envelopes are old, they're dry. <sighs> what am I going to do about this? But anyways, let's take a look at the Dunlin in summer plumage. Oh, yes, very fast looking. Oh, my goodness me, very fast looking wing beats. Whoa, I just can't stop. Oh, my God, this is actually freaking cool, eh? There you go, there's the name Dunlin. Very nice to hear about this species of bird. Oh my goodness me, I just cannot stop freaking flapping this thing! Woo! This is freaking cool, eh? Okay, so this is what we have. That's the head of a Dunlin. It's got a black beak. Uh, orangey sort of eye. Sort of detailing there. Actually, it's the head that I'm talking about. Um, right at the back, looks like that. Uh, black on the side, grey. Big wing tips, of course. And that's what it looks like. It's inner wing markings or outer wing markings look like that. Okay, and there's like more of these guys here. Sort of a bronzy sort of colour. I think, um, I'm pretty sure Dunlins have more of a greyer face in summer plumage than in winter plumage. Maybe that's their colour. Or it could be a juvenile sort of bird. I don't know. But mind you, these guys. I just can't stop freaking flapping them. Oh my god, I think my hands are getting tired, eh? Well, one thing about these birds is that they're sort of, you know, I'm pretty sure they're about the same size as a, as a, um, a starling. I think these guys overall are a little bit like these guys that we often see in towns and cities and stuff. And they do like big murmurations and stuff, like, you know, the knot and the starling. Very beautiful looking birds, even though I haven't... Oh my god, the packaging, I haven't unpacked, or repacked the packaging that well. Oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> sorry about the one, eh? Didn't mean to do that, eh? Go, there you go. Now we're going to move on to three more products. Well, in our last hurrah of all flip up toys, we're now moving on into some parrot themed products. Yay! Let's take a look at this product here. This product here is called the Sun Canoe Parakeet Flock. Or sunk new parakeet colourful flock 12 pack. It's a flip up origami flapping birds pets item. Costs about 14 pounds. And mind you, it looks so so cool. You all get different. Um, oh my goodness me, all different things that relate into the sun. Oh my goodness me, the sun canoe parakeet. And he said Corella, didn't I? Look at this. This is so weird. And look at this. <laughs> that bird. There. I think this looks so. Oh my god. Look at its legs. And look, look at its derby as well. Oh my god. It looks like this cor Oh my god, this Kanua. That's what I'm saying again. Kanua, not Corella. I'm not going to get confused by that Australian uh, cockatoo. Um, this parrot of all looks like he's disoriented. Oh my goodness me. Oh my goodness me. Look what it says here. You look absolutely disoriented. That's what it says on the um, speech bubble there. You look absolutely disoriented. That's one of the most daftest ways of spelling the word absolutely. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I mean, look at it. It's also derby as well. <laughs> oh my god. This is so freaking hilarious, eh? Anyways, let's just go ahead and unpack this and see what cuteness and hilariosity is going to be all about. Woo! Okay, let's take a look at one of the parrots. 
Well, these birds actually come in two different colour variations, though. Well, what I'm actually referring to is that there's actually a different head colour you know, variation between these two birds. Uh, six of these have, like, a yellow uh, head plumage with an orange eye ring on them. Okay? Very interesting birds, though. But most importantly, apart from the fact that there's two different variations, of course, they've all got the same colourisation of the wings being you know, yellow, green, and blue wing tips in the front part of the wing there, and also a rainbow sort of colorized um, sort of tail there. You get yellow, green, and blue. Okay, so it's not like the rainbow lorikeet, but it looks quite nice there. And I think red is like the other missing color, of course, there, like, you know, purple, indigo, I mean, violet and indigo are the other colors which are missing, of course, and also red, which is also missing for another colour of course, there's another one of these here mind you these guys look so so cute, I think there's like another species of canoe which I think they're called, I think in the wild I think you would normally call them parakeets okay so and I think these birds are unrelated because they're not that related to that of the um wing net parakeets that you find in Africa and Asia, these are the ones that you find in South America, okay? So it's like that armadillo that you find in South America, and these are New World parrots, I think. And let me show you the orange-headed parrot though. Okay, this is what we have, this is the sun canoe's second form, the sun parakeet's second form. And it's got like an orange head here. And once again, cute looking and um, wing beats I'm not going to flap all of the birds though here you go, there's some of the orange headed dudes okay, and I've actually um, seen these guys um, i actually seen these guys in a pet store in Smetwick just before New Year's Day or New Year's Eve and mind you these guys look so so cute as frick trying to be very very mild here and not vulgar as I did a bit earlier though on that Great Quest Glee product maybe I should probably put age restricted videos and stuff that'd be a winner but I don't know <sighs> great but anyways it's actually quite nice you know I've actually deleted um, an age restricted video before but I can't remember its name but I'm not going to remember it because it's so embarrassing to watch okay and there's one of the Oh wait, I flapped them, or oh, maybe most of them, sorry, didn't mean to do that. <sighs> okay, maybe I've just flapped some of them. Uh, but anyways, that's quite a very nice rendition of what you would see in the pet store, the Sun Canure. And I'm pretty sure there might be other parakeets in many other pet stores across Birmingham and the Westminster and stuff, and also the UK I travel along. Hopefully I can see a lot more parrot species more than meets the eye than the armadillo transformers animals in the skies is a little bit like you know beast wars i think but let's move on to this product here which is going to be very familiar it's called the blue and gold and yellow macaw small flock five pack costing about eight pounds ninety five Here's the artwork on the back of this product here, and look at the wings on this freaking macaw. It looks like his wings are deranged. They're not really completely symmetrical because both of these wings on that big part there in the middle is, of course, a lot more longer. I think that wing is a lot more longer than that wing on the top uh, right hand corner, of course. But this packaging also comes with some fun facts. Very interesting indeed. And same goes with this Scarlet McCall Wild Flock 12 pack, which costs about £15.95. And they both have the same reading of a McCall has an average lifespan of about 60 years. Some McCalls can fly up to at least around 40 miles per hour. Yep, they can literally fly up to 40 miles per hour. And McCalls can mimic human speech. Reminds me of that video that Stuart Ashens was doing like a, um, you know, a breakfast video, I think, in 2012. Okay, let's go ahead and grab those parrot heads. Parrot faces there, okay? And take what they look like. Oh, yeah! Oh, yes! This is looking like something out of Brazil, eh? Flying through the Ipamina, baby! Oh, my goodness, mate. It looks so, so nice. I think that's a very close resemblance to what you would expect to see in a real adventure around Rio de Janeiro or... Sao Paulo or Venezuela, many other parts of South America, maybe Mexico, Miami, Florida, 
in the USA. I think there's like Wild Phil McCaws in Miami in Florida, but this is what you would expect to see in a local zoo, a farm or a pet store. I mean they're everywhere. They are literally sold everywhere as pets. My goodness me, why would you literally keep these guys as pets even though they're quite large and big? I mean these colours look so attractive. I would love to make so many species of parrots and I just can't even help myself and just making all sorts of freaking parrots from around the world. This is just amazing. Remember I did like corellas and buttery guys and you know, all the other parrots from Australia, like you know, the princess parrot. Now I've got freaking South American, you know, South American parrots. I'm trying to not to confuse guys with South American with South American. American. Oh, just burped and talked, uh, as I do always. Very weird. But yes, anyways, they've all got this beautiful sort of colorization of blue and yellow or gold, and they've all got names. Obvious ones, aren't they? Very obvious ones, yay! In fact, I've actually seen these guys at King's Eve Pet Store. Only one! Only one of them was seen at King's Eve Pet Store. I've actually seen that McCaw many, many times uh, before. Uh, maybe at a bus trip uh, after school in November 2016. I think I've seen these guys before. Only one of them, of course. And let me show you the Scarlet McCaw. Uh, wild flock 12 pack and I do jump cut because I don't want to basically waste time. Okay here we go coming to do the unpacking I love the artwork in these it is also worthy to note that the packaging on the back has also got some palm trees at the back mind you um, if you haven't seen it maybe you have to basically skip the whole video and basically go back to where the palm trees are maybe I should show them now there they are they're on the top obviously okay so that's what they all look like, Scarlet and the Cores. They've got, oh my goodness me, they've all got a double Romanian flag on the bottom of their wings with a pair of triangles on their sides, of course. And they've also got like, you know, it's like the tricolor flag of Romania. Well, there's a, there's, they've even got, I'm pretty sure they've also got like a little green stripe. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I'm pretty sure they've got a little green stripe. You can see there's a bit of green on both of their wings. So I'm pretty sure I'm trying to replicate and emulate something that you would obviously see on a realistic Scarlet Macaw. Looks so beautiful, isn't it? Very beautiful. I think they're more lighter than the blue and gold Macaws. And uh, they only weigh only just one kilogram. Okay, so it's not looking too bad. And once again, these guys, I think I might have actually heard that these guys, I'm pretty sure I've seen them in... Um, at Dudley Zoo, I think, which is like the local zoo that I've actually been to. Okay, very nice looking bird. Very beautiful indeed, obviously, I'd say. Lovely, beautiful green stripes. Once again, they're one of the very significant birds that you often see in Brazil and South America and stuff like that. Oh, I don't think this one's got green stripes. Some of them don't have green stripes, or others do. And um, this one here does. Maybe I should probably edit some of the other Scarlet McCoys and probably grab a yellow pen and do like green stripes all over them. I think this one doesn't have any green stripes in them. And on the sides, green lines on the sides of their wings. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, this one's got blue sides on the wings though, instead of green. Very weird, isn't it though? Um, this one probably has. Maybe it doesn't. Um, maybe it does. Yep, I'm pretty sure it does. And this one here. Yep, totally does. And mind you, I've actually done these guys uh, pretty well, though. And they've all got very weird eyes. This one's got some very big googly eyes where they don't move. But mind you, nevertheless, these guys look very colourful. Uh, probably, I'm not sure how cheap they are, but they look very cheerful indeed. And that sums up for the rest of this ultimate flip toy review for summer 2020. Yay! I know we're living in unprecedented times now, but please enjoy the whole summer of heaven or hell, however or whatever you like to depict it is, or as it is, but there you go, the Scarlet McCall Wild Flock 12 Pack. I'm pretty sure you bird watchers or lovers are going to be raving at this, because that's the sort of product I love to make. Well, these are the sort of products I obviously love making. In fact, 
I'll be making more parrots in the future. Well, anyways, that's just about that in this video. If you enjoyed this ultimate summer food fact toy review video, then the first of all for June 2020, please give this video a like, subscribe for more food fact videos on YouTube, and I gotta tell you guys, hey, you're gonna see next, don't you? Thank you so much for watching, and bye for now. Bye.